Well, because you said so, we've had we've got Larry Goldberg back again. Larry is a very big bull on uh, Tesla, uh, even though he calls himself a pessimist. But we wanted to find out what Larry thought about the current place of Tesla in the marketplace. And I'm talking about the stock price. Where's it going in the future? What kind of ropes? Again, he says he's a pessimist to my optimist. So maybe we'll find that Larry's going to raise red flags that I haven't even thought of. <laughs> Larry, glad to have you back on the show. Thanks, Randy. I appreciate it. You know, it's Our interesting man. you talk about raising red flags on, on Tesla, but, you know, a lot of people have raised red flags on Tesla over the last six months or so. I mean, starting with, you know, the price cuts. So, you know, it doesn't take... A, an idiot like me to, to raise red flags, those red flags are there. We don't know, we haven't seen yet how this price thing is going to play out, You're right? I mean, the demand, yes. I, I mean, so uh, anyway, I, I mean, I, I, get, I, think, I think I'm getting ahead of the program here. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so if you like having Larry on, if you think he adds to the conversation, please hit the like button and hit subscribe, hit notify to be made aware of when, not just Larry, I've got a bunch of good guests coming on and you're going to want to be notified of when they're on. And then finally, um, you know, my Patreon is, uh, we're putting up all kinds of good stuff on Patreon now. So you probably want to think about joining Patreon. So Larry, okay, let's jump right. Let me set a stage of right. my perception right now of the Tesla stock. I haven't even done this for my for my audience yet. So I, what I feel is that in the absolute nutty period of 2020, 21, where everybody was a stock market genius, the market got way oversold, not way overbought rather. I bought, yeah. And, and there was a lo lot of risk money out there. Everybody was looking for the new, whatever it was gonna be. They, a lot of FOMO, everybody trying to get on a lot of retail investors involved in, in Tesla, and the stock got way, way out beyond what it probably should have. So using the all-time high as a marker is a little weird because it was really maybe 10, 20, 30% higher than it probably should have been in normal circumstances. So then it crashes. It crashes from... Uh, uh, 400 roughly to 100 roughly, 75% uh, drop in value. And all, the, all of Kathy Wood's stocks also crashed. I keep comparing Tesla to what I call the risky growth stocks. All Innovation of stocks. Yeah. Instead of comparing to the NASDAQ, comparing to the Dow, I compare it to the risky growth stocks. And I was able to chart that on a daily basis. It was moving for the last two years almost like those risky growth stocks, but it decoupled three or four weeks ago and it's no longer, it's no longer, it's, it's completely decoupled from the NASDAQ, from the Dow, from the risky growth stocks. It's on its own, including today, the day that we're recording this was the first high to down day, second down day in a row, but really down more than a fraction. It was down a couple of points. Um, uh, uh, since the big run-up, the four, 13 days in a row, and the market was way up, even the risky growth stocks were up and Tesla was down. So anyway, Larry, I'm looking at a situation where I think it was it went crazy too high, then crazy too low, and everybody that's looking at that high and that low are missing the real story. Um, and where are we now? I think we're heading back to 700 by the end of next year. Now I'll turn it over to you. You know, I think Tesla suffers, um, so te not Tesla suffers, Tesla's stock price suffers from uh, technical issues um, in the stock market because it, there are so many short sellers and so many option buyers that um, its ac actions are amplified multiple fold. So amplified to the upside and amplified to the downside. And so 
you have to look at it through that lens. So whatever happens to the market, um, no, whatever happens to Tesla sentiment, not to the market, but Tesla sentiment, which is also impacted by the market, but whatever happens to Tesla sentiment really impacts the share price out of proportion to what is happening. So I think, you know, I, I'm not an expert on on options and and, and derivatives of stocks. Um, for that, there are experts and they know a lot about it. I don't. Um, I have done very well out of holding long dated options leaps on Tesla. Uh, I, I've done that a lot. I hold leaps today. You know, I'm a I'm a, not a big investor in the market. I've always stuck to it to sort of 10% of my assets in the market because most of my assets are in very, very, you know, are in my business, which is pretty risky, or businesses which are very risky. So I keep a very large percentage of my assets in highly safe investments like treasuries. I keep a proportion in my private companies and then a small proportion in the market. Much of that has been in Tesla in the last five years. And and my <clears throat> and and it was the same in the years that I held Amazon. I held Amazon from 1999 roughly to 2020. Um, and but but you know when I said I hold 10%, that's 10% at my cost. It's right, you know, it, it because these stocks have done very well in the environment we've lived through the this, these wonderful years we've lived through. They've gone through the roof and out of proportion, and then from time to time, I don't sell them often. But when I do sell them, I sell them because I've lost conviction in that stock, you know, for the future. So I have a very high conviction for Tesla. I I think its ups and downs are. Cr- are really sentiment driven rather than, you know, really proper analysis based driven. I, I know Gary, for whom, you know, Gary Black, for whom I have enormous respect, he kind of correlates it to events and, and to how the analysts are analyzing it. But the institutional holding of Tesla has not been that high traditionally. I think it's growing. So I think a lot of those analysts, professional analysts, in their opinions, have less impact on it than they would on another stock. But but nonetheless, I mean, he correlates the movement to you know events in the marketplace and and perceptions, marketplace perception. But I don't as much. I think that it's that there's a lot of sentiment both ways that impacted and a lot of option buying and selling that has a huge impact on it. So all of that said, I I hold Tesla for the future because I I am I have the same view that you have at the end of the day. I have a view that this is a generational company. I think it is as much an AI company as the best AI companies out there. I think it's as much a new order company as the best new auto company out there. I think it has um, the opportunity with its AI and its robotics approach to really break the mold and really open the open the market for ro- robots, which has been really unsuccessful up to now in any real, real sense. But not because people can't make robots. A lot of people make robots because people aren't uh, don't have the first principles thinking that Elon brings to the, to the table, and then and There's then. Also, also, yeah, Larry, Larry, I hate to interrupt you at that point. Sure. Just to say that there was also a convergence. Yes. So the, no the, robot, the robot thing. The robot thing just couldn't happen ten without, years I, or five without, years ago without yeah. some of the miniaturization and the, now the the AI, yeah. Yeah, now look, Tesla aren't the only company with AI. Right. But they're the only company with the ability to use 
a true vision um, uh, uh, input as a primary input. And, and that's quite revolutionary. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, it, it is first principles thinking at every aspect of the robot. That's the difference between, you know, a car that, without that thinking, the electric car revolution could not have happened. Right. Could not have happened. You know, you could have had batteries, but, you know, you wouldn't have had, you know, the software. You could have had the software and the batteries, but you didn't have, you know, the build concept. I mean, there are just so many things that had to happen. The integration of the software, the you know, there are so many things that had to happen, and they couldn't have happened without that first principle thinking. The same thing with the rockets. So, you know, that's why I have fairly high confidence in these different businesses that that Tesla represents. So I have very, very high level of conviction in Tesla. I see it as a ten-year play. Um, like you, this is for my children. It's not for me. Um, I, I I may not see it. You know, I'm 77 years old. I, I may not see the end of the story. And, you know, my children will have to continue and have to have their own judgment as to how long and so on. But, but I think it's a, you know, a decade long story. But if you ask me what the price was going to be in five years or in 10 years, unlike Kathy, I can't give you the answer. <laughs> She, now, she's much cleverer than I am, and she's much more experienced at this than I am, and her people are very skilled. And so I, I trust the numbers that they put out. I trust the number you put out. I trust the number that, you know, several people have given, that, you know, some really good analysts. And, and that, that Gary's but, – but none of us are going to be right. Right. <laughs> you know? It'll be something else. It's just a matter of which – It'll be which, something, which something else, but I be. think that we are going to be right directionally directionally yes yes yeah, yeah i larry you, you uh, i have been calling it a, a a narrative stock a story stock yeah. um and every stock has a story i mean it doesn't matter you can talk about a company that's you know only doing a million dollars a year or five million dollars your companies uh you know when they were small there was still a story you could have told the story as the owner as the founder you could have told the story yes well Tesla, though, has been uh, maybe the most significant story stock of all time with a storyteller at the helm who likes to be seen publicly. And this is such an unusual circumstance. It's yeah. so odd. Elon Musk may have, uh, he's, got a, he's an amazing communicator, even though he's halting and everything else that he does. He's an amazing communicator because the smartest guy maybe on the planet right now is able to communicate in such a way as as any any plebe can understand him. It's well, amazing. Are, also, it, and also here, the transparency, which mm -hmm. makes it believable. And so you put together a great fundamental company that's executing on all levels with a vision that is creates a great story. And then a communicator who's willing to go out and tell that story over and over again. It's hard to imagine. I just, I, I don't know. I you're, missing, you're missing the most important component oh, okay. of that story. Okay. The proven ability to make it happen. I said execution. Oh, you said, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, I a lot of people tell stories, you know. I remind you of the company Nikola, you know, I mean... <laughs> A lot of people tell stories um, and, you know, and a lot of people can communicate as well or better than, than Elon. But his ability to execute, now he, he, he admits that he, you know, sometimes turns the impossible into the late. Yes. And, yes. and that's, that's just a true statement. And he does that because he doesn't have the patience to wait for the late. He sees what is possible. He sizes it up. You know, he does this first principles thinking. He sizes it up. He thinks about moving the atoms and what it's going to take to move the atoms, figures it out, and then, you know, gives a number or gives a date, I should say. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, his date. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, 
I mean, he's been amazing. I, you know, I wrote a piece some years ago about how he predicted half a million um, uh, cars, you know, and, and, and he did this in 2009. Nine, nine? Oh, nine. Okay. Nine. He predicted half a million cars in 2014. And he delivered that. And then they said they're going to grow it at 50% per annum. Now, everybody thinks that means 50% last year's. No, it's 50% compound from that base. Right. And they've right. hit it every year and they're going to hit it this year. I think the number is like 1,600, 1.68 million. I think they're going to be there, be there by the you know the end of the third quarter. Third quarter, yes. Yeah. Early in the fourth quarter. The the point is that yeah, he does the impo- he he turns the impossible into late, but with you know amazing level of success. Oh yes, oh yes. Amazing level of success. Now, hasn't delivered on the most difficult and potentially the most valuable of all, and that's you know robot taxi or you know full autonomy. But I see it being possible. I see it being within reach. I, I've said three years. Other people have said three months, but. We'll see. Um, I, well, I think he, famous, he, famous, he famously said, and I never heard anybody disagree with him, that this is the most difficult thing that's ever been tried by man. <laughs> and, uh, and nobody said, you're wrong. <laughs> here's here's something that was more difficult. <laughs> I think getting to Mars may be more difficult. Well, that's after those. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, so it's, it's, wonderful, it's wonderful to be part of that. But I will say that there are some danger signs. So I would say that, you know, I wish you were less political. You know, I don't disagree necessarily with all he says politically, but I don't agree that he should be saying these things politically. But he feels committed. Yeah. And I really respect that. Um, I don't think people understand what he's saying because I think people kind of block what he's saying and then they interpret what they you know project on him of course i think there's a risk there and there are many other risks as well there's a huge political risk huge political risk that goes beyond what he's saying it goes to his level of power you know people are not people who are not politicians or not in the public we all are not allowed to have that level of power and so what the people with power will do about that i don't know so that's a risk. So tick, 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 a whole bunch of risks. But otherwise, I'm aligned with you. I just can't give a number. Yeah, I can say it's going to be a high number and it's going to grow very nicely to that number. And I don't care what tomorrow brings. I know we don't we don't care what tomorrow brings, but, but a lot of people do. Yeah. And so a, a lot of folks, you know, look to various pundits uh, and people who think they're pundits like me. Yeah. <laughs> who give some kind of a flavor based on not because we're analysts that uh, have any certification or you know are, are paid by anybody to give these numbers but if you uh, based on your historical you know playing the market for all these years and I'm sure right. you look at it every day like I do what do you, do you think that the do you think it's oversold I mean uh yeah overbought at this point? Do you think that twenty, the twenty five hundred, I mean two hundred fifty, is is high, or do you think we go to three hundred without much impediment? Do you think I'm crazy to think it'll be seven hundred by the end of next year? I don't think it's high right now. Um, I used to, I used to keep a historic, uh, a spreadsheet with an historic uh, uh, earnings uh, EPS and show where I thought, thought the earnings were going to go and then where I thought the price was going to go. But the macro killed me because macro went down. So, But nonetheless, um, and, and we're in a period of uncertainty because of pricing, a very significant period of uncertainty because of pricing. I want to talk about, so, so before I actually give you my opinion, I want to talk about one thing we haven't talked about yet, and that's the product cycle product model cycle mm -hmm. we're in a we're in a tough time in the product market cycle you know i remember an interview of elon's uh, and i can't remember who it was it was one of the 
one of the networks were interviewing him in the factory. Um, and, um, and one of those big networks, it was probably four years ago, five years ago, and he was being interviewed. It was in the production hell period. Um, and he and they were asking about the future and he, you know, became quite misty-eyed. He said, you know, other car companies can do multiple cars at a time. We can only do one at a time. And unless Tesla is able to get beyond the one at a time, and I'm not talking about just manufacturing capacity, I'm talking about design, engineering, everything that goes with adding a new model, they're not going to, they're going to be in a growth hiatus until they actually solve that problem. Now, for the first time, they've got the money, they've got the engineering depth of talent, they've got everything they need to do that. And, you know, this could be why Elon's trotting around Spain and Italy and France and, and why senior people went to India, because they're thinking about not only new factories, but also new models. And, and to me, two new models don't hack it. You know, I, I think they need multiple new models. Now, that's the beauty of the new platform, that it's going to support multiple models. They talked about two models, but I think it's going to support, and I believe they didn't they didn't say it was going to be two. I think they were using that uh, indicative, indicatively. I think it's going to support multiple. But they have to get to that. Now, where are we now? We're, you know, in this point where the, the three is, is rolling down, the X and the Y have rolled down. They really need new product. I'm sorry, the X and the S. The Y is the going. Yes, yes. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So they really need new product. But more importantly, they need a, a they need to get this new product rollout on a much 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 faster plane, and they're constantly reinventing how they manufacture cars, and that's holding them back as well. They need to move faster than that. So, I think that that's the medium term issue with the stock price. The short term yeah, issue is this, yeah. So, so here, here's a little, a little, you know, uh, pushback for for that. Yeah, um, I am a car guy. I think you said earlier, maybe in another time that we talked, that you're a car guy. I really like stylish cars, and I and I've always wanted to have a car that nobody else was driving. I drove Mazda Rotaries. You know, I mean, I drove. I've driven lots of cars that nobody else was driving. I drive a Volvo right now. You know, it's a very rare. Not, it's not rare in West LA where I used to live, but it's very rare in Riverside where I live now. <laughs> so anyway, but the Model Y is, there's something going on different with, they are everywhere Ever. in California. You can come You can come up to a, a, an intersection in Riverside, which is not Model Y territory. It's not Tesla right. territory. You can go right. to an intersection. And there'll be four other Model Ys in this same intersection with you. And it's not unusual. It's common. Yeah. Well, it's not true. That's not true in South Carolina. That's not true. In Actually, Iowa. Randy, I live in North Carolina. <laughs> oh, okay. You live in North Carolina. <laughs> I just drove back yesterday from a, a meeting in, in the countryside. Coming down that road, it's... it's it's a country road that turns into a fairly large arterial road and it drives from this guy's place to my place. There was just one solid stream <laughs> of Ys. And I'm not talking just one or two or three. I'm talking 20, 30. <laughs> there were more Ys than there were other cars on the road. In the area I live in, which is a high-tech area, it's the Research Triangle Park. It's high-tech. I mean, every other car is a Y. Or a but, test anyway. But if we look statistically, you know, Tennessee really? is like 1.5%, you know, yeah. electric, and and Missouri is 2%. Yeah. And, you know, they, they're just, and California is probably over 20%. They were 17% in 2022. So oh. it's probably over 20% now of, uh, of uh, Teslas um, in uh, the state of California. So, I mean, new car purchases. Um, so I'm not sure there hasn't been 
there, there might be a slight switch going off in people's head about this business of being so uh, so unique, so special. It might be generational. It might be that uh, it might be that it's uh, is because the car is so special and there's nothing else like it. You can't really buy the other car if you want to have. I mean, it's just you know the other cars just don't measure up. Um, so you you have a choice: a Model Three or a Model Y. If you're if you're poor like my, like me. Uh, you know, I, so yes and no, I, I just think that, you know, there are, so there's the so-called $25,000, which are really $30,000 and below car. Right. There is the 40 to 45, but you know, a real, a real SUV, you know, large SUV with three rows of seats, full scale. I, I have an X that doesn't fulfill that particular category. And that's a huge seller in the United States. You know, what they call a full-size right. truck, they call it, but a right. full-size SUV. That's a huge part of the US market. Yeah. And Tesla has chosen not to fulfill that. Well, they should, and they have to. That's yeah. a huge part of the market. Now, the another is very point, important. Right. Now, 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 another pushback is, we might be only two to three years from having robo taxis, in which case that will disrupt the market across the board. Every it, it's not going to happen immediately. It's not going to happen in one year, but it's going to be an immediate disruptor of everything about cars. It's going to change the way people think within yep. a pretty short period of time. So I'm not sure whether we'll need as many models going forward. Now, yes, we're going to need. Uh the $25,000 car, and we're going to need some kind of a minivan or something like that. I mean, the two or three cars I think you're talking about, and then we have the Cybertruck. So you will have a Model 3, a Model Y, a Cybertruck, and probably three other cars in that lower end uh, Generation 3. But I I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if Elon has no plans for going beyond that. Well, it would be a mistake not to have a full-scale, full-size SUV, three-row you know, full full size, like a Chevy Tahoe or whatever they call those things. Uh -huh. I think that that's not going to go away in the robot taxi world because the the family is going to go out, and you know that that's an American. That's the just the way, and and in the world I live in here, uh, those full size trucks, and in California, everywhere I've been in, you know, those full size trucks sure. are kind of. Very good. And yeah, yeah. I don't think RoboTax is going to change that. All right. So now you're back to you've 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 escaped twice now. Yeah. Get, what do you what are you going to tell the folks? We won't hold you to it. You're just yeah. you're just saying like me. I don't know what's going to happen. I I don't think we're fully priced yet in the short term. I think there may be some pullback now because it's gone up a lot. Yeah. Um, I, there may be some pullback. Um, you know, the, the option traders are, the, so the guy, the bears are going to, you know, attack it very heavily. So there's going to be some fluctuations, but I see the stock going up in three months time. I think we're going to, I think we're going to have a pause in the stock and maybe a bit of a blip down uh, with the earnings from this quarter. Um, okay. I, I don't know that, our, you know, our deliveries are going to be, you know, 450, 460. If they 450 and above, be great. Could be lower. Um, margins are still going to be low, so we could get a hit, you know, around the end of the quarter and into the first month of next quarter. But I, I just see that we're going to be going up from there. And I think if we have a first of September or 30th of September delivery event for somewhere between that time, delivery event for Robotech, for, Robotech. for, a cyber truck. <laughs> for a cyber truck. then I think, I think the Cybertruck event will definitely see us in that 300 range. Because I think that's the, that's where the price should be in that 300 ish range. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think so. But I'm very, very, very bullish on next year very bullish. 
um, as long as the Cybertruck uh, ramp is halfway decent, I think by the end of next year, we're going to see a very significant increase in the price. That's that's my bet. And I'm holding, you know, 26s and, and I'm holding 26s in order to trade up in 25 to go to that next level and I'll probably go to stock at that point. But but anyway, that, that's that's the game plan in my head. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Although I'm I am holding some July 24s on the uh, or June 24s on my uh, leaps. Uh, so I'm I'm looking to trade those in 25 yeah. fairly soon. <laughs> I would be getting uncomfortable, you know. Oh, well, I'm, I'm I'm perfectly I'm perfectly comfortable with the with where I am right now, but I still think it'd be a good idea to trade them in for, for yeah. uh, even. Yeah. yeah. No, I I, I I agree with that. As long as you only have to pay capital gains on it, right? Oh no no no! It's all it's all in the pension. Yeah, yeah. Oh, then 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 you don't. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. Some of the family money is in uh, um, tax in um, uh, tax sheltered tax sheltered uh, instruments, but some is not, and that that which is not is really. in my taxes from the stuff is so high. <laughs> yes. So we're really getting into the weeds now. Let me just say that if you're trading in and out of stocks, this is something for some of the newcomers, probably the people that have been around for a while and trading know. If you're jumping in and out, if you're day trading, you don't want to do that if you're going to have to do capital gains. So you need to put, if you're going to be a day trader, it's better put that money in your 401k or your, your sub IRA or something where you're not, not paying capital gains. So that's a little bit of an explanation for what Larry and I were just talking about. Anyway, Larry- The okay. explanation was, if you want to be a day trader, don't. Yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah, I did very, I was a genius in 2020. So, but I wasn't such a genius in 2022. So anyway, that's how day trading works. Uh, Larry, great having you on. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. If you like having Larry on, you need to hit the like button because that'll encourage me to call him again and see if we can have him again. And then uh, obviously you want to subscribe. I don't know why you haven't already. Do you see those books back there? Have you bought any of my books yet? I would suggest the Elon Musk mission first and then the method. And then if you're in business, you want the other two. Um, so anyway, um, uh, and then there's Patreon if you want to help support the channel and also get all of my spreadsheets about the pro prospects of, tes of Tesla. All the divisions, those are up by now. All of them should be up and ready to look at on Patreon. And uh, that's all I've got for today. Larry, again, thank you for being on. And for all of you out there, it's been great talking to you. Thanks, Randy. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.